Bonjour à tous, hello everyone, hope you all are well. In this video I will be experimenting with the TRB battery repair software. Now TRB is not new to me, well it is new to me. I tried it once but because of licensing I just stopped using it because you can only read it if you don't have a license, a subscription license. So the author of the software uh, messaged me and saw one of my videos where I was struggling with the Ronin M battery that has the um, um, BQ uh, 30Z55 with the MSP430 so he gave me some tips on that and offered me to trial his software with a, a DJ advanced license which means I can clear PF flags so I will show you how to use TRB and clear the PF flag on a battery that has a uh, BQ40Z307 that's the Mini 1, Mini 2, Mini SE, Spark, Mavic Air, Mavic 2 um, Mavic Air 2 and the FPV uh, remote controller battery. So all of these uh, have the BQ40Z307. This TRB can work with those. Can also work with the uh, BQ30Z55s um, with the MSP430. For, uh, That's the Phantom 2, Phantom 3, Phantom 4 series, and the Mavic Pro with the Ronin, the gimbal, Ronin M and Ronin MX batteries. So those are all the batteries that um, they can work on with, with DJI. They can do more batteries, uh, the laptop batteries, but we're not going to talk about that. So just a quick one on how to connect it up. By now everyone should already know that you have to have an interface. So with this TRB software you need an EV2300 or 2400. I use the EV2400. It was cheaper on AliExpress and it works. And your cables to your battery which is the ground SEL SDA uh, but for these we're using the SMBC and SMBD once you have all those connected up we're going to jump onto the software and I'm going to show you how it's done really quickly with TRB Okay, now that we've launched the software, the TRB already picks up the battery, which is good. If it doesn't pick up the battery, you can swap around the um, SMBC to SMBD and just make sure that the ground is the same on both the battery and the uh, interface, the EV unit, and just swap it around and see if it comes. If it doesn't, hold the pins down because sometimes I know those, they don't make good contact, so hold them down and see if it picks up. So those are the things you can check. And with the um, BQ40Z307 batteries, if the uh, cells were too low, if it was changed, um, if you see um, uh, the max error, which is over 100, means the battery is just too low for too long, um, you can uh, jumpstart the or wake it up by shorting the battery from the cells plus to the charge dis discharge port on the front of the battery or the terminal so put those two pluses together just a quick tap and that should wake it up for you to be able to read the BMS so now we've got this running we we can see the battery is sealed in the middle and first thing you do is enable reading if it's not automatically enabled when you launch the software and then we will have to unseal the pack before we can do any work to it Now the pack is unsealed, FAS OK, and then we'll, for the, for these chipsets, for the BQ40Z307, we need to jump to BQ Tools, and we need to go down here, and double check the seal status, pack is unsealed, FAS OK, and then we'll have to use the DJI Recovery DJI PF, so you need to use this one for the BQ40Z307. If you use the other clear PF, it won't work. So this will, ah, yes, I did it twice. Okay, so it's done now. The battery should be, yeah, the battery's on. So I did it a second time. So what uh, the recovery, um, DJI recovery, this bottom, bottom button does is it's going to clear the PF flag and then reseal the battery again. So now that that's done, it's resealed the battery. We're going to check the device registers and read the registers. So. We're going to manufacturer status now. We're going to operation status. So we can see PF is clear now, no PF flag. If it's red, then it still has a PF flag and you need to clear it. 
I hope that wasn't too fast and uh, I'm still exploring the software. The interesting thing is battery records. The developer is working on this so if you do this commercially and if you're repairing batteries this is really interesting because you can actually store logs and create logs for batteries that you repair and it's hosted on the website and then you'll have the logs linked to your account um, via the uh, user end application which is uh, TRB and in BQ tools if you want to generate a report for yourself or your client just write okay or whatever you want to write in the report battery changed calibrated PF gone and then save the log and it generates a uh, sorry you have to click something a status so I click good save log and then it generates a PDF file for you which you can keep for your cell phone file or you can send to your client um, and then it generates a really nice PDF file like this which is printable so if your um, clients are interested in this uh, this is very good paper trailing on the repair work that you do on top of the uh, battery log that they have it's not just a log it's more like a service history for batteries because a log would just store how many cycle counts the serial number and just that and probably cell data but this software it stores battery records like a maintenance like your vehicle maintenance what's been done to it what parts were changed and and whatnot so this is really cool i'm going to get into it a bit more and try out the uh, fixing off the bq 30 z55 which are the phantoms and the ronin i do have a bms for that so i'll get onto that in the near future and see the process and document the process and share it with you so if any person comes across their problem with the battery they can always jump onto this and get an idea of how to fix them i hope this video is helpful until next time fly safe and god bless